You know, one thing I never thought that I would ever hear myself actually say out loud is that I have a favorite developmental psychologist, <laughs> but I do. His name is Eric Erickson, and he is the psychoanalyst that gave us the uh, eight stages of psychosocial development of human beings. Now, you guys have actually heard of this guy before because he coined a famous term, the midlife crisis, uh, but I've actually come to appreciate him for a concept that he introduced me to called the chaotic moment. Chaotic moments are those periods in your life where your perspective suddenly changes. It's those moments where you recognize, I have to do something different as a result of what I've just seen or what I've just experienced. These could be as intense as seeing a plane smash into a building or the death of a loved one. They could be as simple as that first good day on the job or saying something really stupid and getting called out on it. I actually love these moments because they are those moments of awareness. They're those moments that you uh, get to see yourself grow a little bit and get a glimpse at this journey of life that we're on. So over the last three years, I've had kind of an unusually high amount of these chaotic moments in my life uh, that kind of led me to a glimpse of the future. And they all seem to center around my grandson and my introduction to the world of immersive technology, 360-degree video, augmented reality, and virtual reality. The first time I experienced virtual reality, I was physically standing in the middle of Best Buy, but I thought I was standing on a three by three wooden platform hanging off of a mountain about 150 feet above water. So needless to say, my legs were shaking like crazy, my palms were sweaty, and all I kept thinking to myself was, don't say anything out loud, <laughs> don't die. And uh, don't do anything that might prompt somebody to put you on YouTube. <laughs> After being in technology for 20 years, I knew this was going to change the world. I have built technology over the years. I've used technology, but I never felt technology. So I knew I wanted to build this stuff. Uh, being the entrepreneur slash glutton for punishment that I am, I decided to recruit some of my friends and start a company, and we went at it. So I was digging through content, looking for ideas, uh, trying to understand how to build this stuff and what to build. And at the same time, I was dealing with this real reality of raising a grandson who's autistic. This was a frustrating process for me because I'm a natural problem solver, and uh, I just didn't really have a good perspective on what he goes through in his life. So I didn't know whether I was doing it the right way, whether I was teaching him the right things. All of that changed for me one day when I found an autism simulator in virtual reality. I put the goggles on, and this is what I saw. I started noticing that the color was different. Patterns on the wall moved. I used to see my grandson stare at the wall and just bust out laughing. All of a sudden, I understood what that, why that might be. Sound was completely out of whack. I, I felt what it might feel like to be overstimulated. And in that moment, I immediately knew what I had to do differently. I had a completely different perspective because I realized this might be the way that he sees the world every day, all day. And that was powerful. I showed my wife, I brought my daughter over, showed her, and I noticed that instantly we all dealt with him differently. We were much more patient with him. It was awesome. So all of a sudden, building video games in VR seemed kind of pointless. Uh, I decided that I actually wanted to build these type of experiences because I realized we had the ability to put people in other people's shoes, show them a different perspective. So that's exactly what we did. We built uh, a social work training simulator to help people to learn how to be more empathetic to the families that they're dealing with. We built an epilepsy simulator to help people see what it might feel like to have a seizure. This one was super intense. We built an opioid detox simulator to help people, practitioners, families, to understand what their loved ones might be going through when they're trying to get off of these drugs. We fully embraced this concept that this guy Chris Milk introduced on a TED Talk stage of VR being the ultimate empathy machine. But I knew there was more. It was value, but it wasn't the value. 
My grandson loves trees. He has an affinity for trees. He can spot a tree from a mile away and tell you exactly what it is. It's uncanny to watch him do this. So one morning I'm getting ready and uh, he comes into the bathroom. He uh, has this little game that he plays when he gets really excited where he starts rattling trees off uh, and then we say trees back to him. So he was all excited this morning. He comes in, Grandpa, pine tree, sycamore tree, and, you know, I'm, I'm saying maple tree, and uh, I, I don't know trees, so uh, I always lose the game, <laughs> but I'm very happy to take that L. <laughs> but, you know, I had an epiphany, another chaotic moment. You know, if I were to build a tree in virtual reality, I will bet you that my grandson would be much more tuned in and might learn better from this tree than from his counselor about how to deal with social cues. It was that realization that virtual reality could be a great learning tool. At the same time, we started to see all these statistics kind of hitting the market, validating this cognitive impact. We saw that uh, VR is actually a great alternative to drugs for pain management. We saw that it's a great phobia PTSD treatment, and we started to see statistics coming back that were showing us that, in fact, retention levels are exponentially higher when you train in virtual reality. This is where I feel like the state of the industry is right now for what I call cognitive VR. It's a great training tool. Uh, We're starting to see it deployed, and I think that if this continues to tip, we will uh, all be training in virtual reality inside of two years. It's a better way to learn. Now, by now, you may be seeing the same pattern that I was starting to notice. I love thinking about how to apply virtual reality. And my grandson always seems to be the catalyst for the killer ideas. <laughs> but this goes way beyond just empathy or, uh, or learning. I had another set of ideas. I had another realization. And that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. I haven't had a chance to build this stuff, so I'm hoping I can spark some ideas, some new ways of thinking about how we can leverage this to empower people. So I'm going to give you the real simple premise of where this uh, went for me. When you can't see very well, you put on glasses. When you can't hear very well, you use a hearing aid. Those don't change who you are. They're just tools to kind of help you to navigate the world a little easier. I started thinking about how this could apply to my grandson. Maybe instead of trying to change his behavior, we just kind of give him some tools to help him relate to the world a little easier and allow him to be his authentic self. So I have three simple ideas that I wanted to share. Let's see how it goes. Here's the first one. We have these augmented reality glasses that are coming on the scene. What I'd love to do is see an app where a person like my grandson wearing the goggles, uh, anytime he sees a face, a target would get projected right in between the eyes of the person that he's looking at. And then I can teach him to just look at the dot, look at the target. And then that way he doesn't have to worry about processing social cues and all of that good stuff. To me, it's just going to look like he's looking at me in my eyes. A little bit easier. I call that bifocals for autism. Um, I was uh, sharing my crazy bifocals for autism idea with a friend of mine, and uh, she started telling me, she has an autistic son, she started telling me about how he has problems with personal space. So we talked about this idea of a bubble that could be an augmented reality application. And uh, as I'm walking around, or as my grandson's walking around, the bubble, if he gets in the bubble, it changes color, right? So now he has like a good visual cue, hey, you're, you're in somebody's personal space, maybe you should back up a little bit. Kind of along those same lines, I was sharing the idea, ran across another person who had an autistic son, and they were actually going down the same road that I was starting to go down of this being a potential empowerment tool. We talked about this navigation system. Let's say that my grandson's trying to get to work, right? He could put the goggles on, some arrows are laid out, there's annotations along the way, maybe his tree is there to soothe him along the way and help him get to his destination, still being his self. So these are just three simple ideas that really showed me what I think is the future of this technology, which is empowerment in a more authentic way. I could see this ending with glasses that are processing the electrical signals from your brain, that are measuring visual 
audio olfactory cues from your environment and then just adjusting your reality, adjusting your perception to make it a little easier to navigate through the day. So VR has been an interesting journey for me. It's kind of like a solution looking for a problem. And that's the funny thing about technology. You never really can predict when it's going to tip or if it's going to tip. I hope that immersive technology doesn't get relegated to just video games and 3D glasses because it's so much more than that. You know, right now it only really handles a couple key use cases, but those use cases are transformational for the people that they benefit. So I want to leave you with one final thought. We talked about these chaotic moments, these periods uh, where your perspective shifts. Up until now, we've had to rely on fate to create these moments. But with immersive technology, we now have the ability to manufacture these moments. So I ask you, if you had the ability to show someone your perspective on a situation that you're dealing with in the hopes that it would change their perspective, what would you show them? Thank you.